Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ladies and gentlemen, let's continue our computational fluid dynamics CFD tutorials uh, In this video, we're going to talk about a very important uh, technique uh, We're going to talk about the dynamic mesh technique uh, We talked about the sliding mesh technique in our previous tutorials We covered uh, 2D and 3D uh, vertical axis wind turbine using sliding mesh technique let's see we have here our uh, tutorial about the 2d sliding mesh uh, vertical axis wind turbine and here we have the 3d uh, vertical axis wind turbine and the turbine ventilator please you have to watch them before watching this video uh, especially when we talk about the fluent syllab okay here uh, we have the uh, slide mesh and dynamic meshes we have to talk about the things so the dynamic mesh model allows you to move the boundaries of a cell zone uh, relative to other boundaries of the zone and to adjust the mesh accordingly okay so the motion of the boundaries can be rigid, such as pistons moving inside an engine. Uh, the piston do, uh, do, does not uh, is not changed or uh, deformed. No, it is rigid. It just moves. Okay. And uh, here a flap deflecting on an airfoil wing, uh, or or can be deforming, such as an elastic wall of a balloon during inflation or a flexible uh, artery wall responding to the pressure pulse from the heart so you can use both actually also here an important special case of dynamic mesh motion is called the sliding mesh in which all of these boundaries of the cell uh, of given mesh zone move together in a rigid body motion in this situation the nodes of the mesh move in space relative to fixed global coordinates but the cells defined by the nodes do not, do not deform, okay? Furthermore, uh, mesh zones moving adjacent to the other, one another can be linked across one or more non-conformal interfaces. We talked about the sliding mesh and we uh, defined uh, these things. So here are the dynamic mesh uh, theory and here are the conservation or uh, equations, so of course you have to know uh, the Navier-Stokes equations to understand these things. We can hear the, uh, also the sixth degree of freedom, we're gonna use it. Uh, it allows you to hear the sixth Dov solver and answers flow into the object's forces and moments in order to compute the transitional and angular motion of, this, uh, of the center of gravity of an object. So this is completely different from the sliding mesh. The sliding mesh, we used mesh motion in fluent. This means that you're gonna use a, fic a fixed uh, radian per second, 20 or 30, uh, okay, or in RPM. It does not change with the time, okay? The RPM is fixed of the turbine. The, uh, the RPM is fixed all the time. But if you use the sixth degree of freedom uh, in the dynamic mesh, the forces will act on the turbine or the object that rotates and it will affect the omega. Okay, so here is the uh, idea of this video is to use these things. And here the sliding mesh theory, okay? So we have here using sli uh, dynamic meshes in uh, use the user guide. We have here, let's check out so the dynamic mesh here, the smoothing, layering, remeshing, and we have here some options, okay? So let's talk about the smoothing. Three groups of mesh motion methods are available in SFLM to update the volume mesh in the deforming regions subject to the motion defined at boundaries. So the smoothing method, when the smoothing is used to adjust the mesh of a zone with a moving and or deforming boundary, the interior nodes of the mesh move, but the, numbers, the number of nodes and their connectivity does not change. Okay? 
Uh, we have here uh, three options or three methods, spring, uh, plus standard layer, or diffusion or linearly elastic solid. So we have here a spring-based uh, smoothing. For spring-based smoothing, the edges between any two mesh nodes are idealized, uh, idealized as a network of interconnected springs. We have here, uh, this is the initial uh, mesh. So what happens if you use this method? You can simulate the mesh like this. Okay. So this is the idea of the uh, spring. Also, we have to know uh, the spring constant factor, the conversion tolerance, and number of iterations. So let's see here the spring constant factor. This is the, this is the equation that is used okay you can control the spring stiffness by adjusting the value of a spring constant factor between zero and one value zero indicates that there is no damping on the springs and boundary node uh, displacements have more influence on the motion of the interior nodes a value of one imposes the default level of damping on the interior node displacement as determined by solving equation 10.4 this is 10.4. So you also you have to know uh, the iterations. Okay. Okay, we have here uh, many things. Please, uh, you have to know what's going on and you have to read about them. You can control the solution of question 10.4 using the values of convergence tolerance and the number of iterations uh, like this. You have to know these things. And you have to read carefully uh, the theory guide. Here, the diffusion based smoothing. For the diffusion based smoothing, the mesh motion is governed by the diffusion equation. It's another equation. Okay, and the boundary conditions are obtained from the user prescribed or computed six DOF boundary motion on deforming boundaries. Uh, deforming boundaries, the boundary conditions are such the, uh, that the mesh motion is tangent to the boundary. Of course, you have to take a look on many applications, at many applications, like this, this is the initial mesh. So what happens? You can simulate this thing like that. Or he degenerated mesh after 40 degree rotation using spring-based smoothing. Okay, uh, here and where u is the mesh displacement velocity, the boundary conditions for equation 10.7 are obtained. Okay, okay, uh, forming boundaries conditions are such that the mesh motion is tangent to the boundary. And here the Laplace equation then describes how the prescribed boundary motion diffuses into the interior of the deforming mesh. So we have here a diffusion, okay. The diffusion coefficient gamma in equation 10.7 can be used to control how the boundary motion affects the interior mesh motion. A constant coefficient means that the boundary motion diffuses uniformly throughout the mesh. Okay, With a non-uniform diffusion coefficient, mesh nodes in regions with high effusivity tend to move together. So Ansys Fluent uses different numerical methods to solve the vector uh, equation 10.7, depending on the element types present in the mesh in the absence of the polyhedral elements or elements with hanging nodes that is adapted uh, and some uh, hex uh, core or cut cell meshes, the equation is solved using a finite element discretization and displacement velocity U is obtained directly at the mesh node. So gentlemen, it depends uh, on many things and you have to know what is the best for your situation you see here is the hex uh, or the uh, is not a triangular mesh okay please uh, you have to follow the optimum mesh type for each uh, simulation it doesn't matter uh, what you think <laughs> what matters actually the physics behind the uh, the simulation and the required mesh type. 2D, uh, 3D, uh, you have to know if you may, you may use 
the triangular or we uh, or it is better to use the uh, the other mesh type okay also we have here uh, another thing so the facility based on boundary distance using the boundary distance based diffusion allows you to control how the boundary motion uh, diffuses into the interior of the domain as a function of the band of a boundary distance so you can decrease it or increase it and here effect of diffusion uh, parameter of zero on interior node motion you can make it like this and here we, we use triangular mesh okay also there are many many parameters you can read about it here and here we can use linearly elastic solid based smoothing method with mesh smoothing based on linearly elastic solid model the mesh motion is governed by the following set of equations and you can here read more about it and here the Laplacian smoothing method Laplacian smoothing is the most commonly used in the simplest mesh smoothing uh, method this method adjusts the location of each mesh vertex to the, uh, to the geometric center of its neighboring uh, vertices this method is computationally inexpensive but it does not guarantee an improvement on mesh quality since uh, repositioning a vertex by Laplacian smoothing can result in poor quality elements. This is the problem of the general problem of the dynamic mesh is the deformation uh, of or the degeneration of the elements. So also you can use the boundary layer smoothing uh, method. The boundary layer smoothing method is used to deform the boundary layer mesh during a moving deforming mesh simulation also like this we have here a triangular uh, mesh but we have here an inflation uh, around around the uh, airfoil here are the deformed compliant strip and here are the zooming into the undeformed compliant uh, strip here are the inflation layers and here is after the deformation deformed compliant strip with boundary layer smoothing applied so you can make these things uh, another thing you have to know is that dynamic layering the dynamic layer in the hexahedral or which, or which mesh zones it does not uh, work with the triangular mesh you can use the dynamic mesh layering to add or remove layers of cell adjacent to a moving boundary Based on the height of the layer adjacent to the moving surface, so the dynamic mesh model and its fluent allows you to specify an ideal layer height on each moving boundary. Notice that is uh, hexa, not triangular, and you can read these things to know what's going on. Okay, and you have height based or ratio based and split factor and collapse factor. You can use these things. So you can use the dynamic layering method to split or merge cells adjacent to any moving boundary provided the following conditions are met. All cells adjacent to the moving phase zone are either wedges or hexahedra or quadrilaterals uh, in 2D. So we do not need to uh, use the triangular uh, mesh even though uh, the cell zone may contain mixed cell shapes. So the cell layers must be completely bounded by one-sided phase zones except when sliding interfaces are used like this like this case also the remeshing methods on ones with in on zones uh, with a triangular tetrahedral mesh the spring based smoothing method describe the spring okay is normally used okay but when the boundary displacement is large compared to the cell, local cell sizes the cell quality can deteriorate and here is the deal it's a big deal or the cells can become degenerate okay so this will invalidate the mesh for example the result in negative cell volumes so what what we have to do is uh, and here consequently will lead to convergence problems to uh, circumvent circumvent this problem 
as fluent uh, agglomerates cells that violate the skewness or size criteria and locally remeshes the uh, agglomerated cells or faces. So we have here to use the remeshing methods if you uh, meet this problem. Okay. So I have here local cell, local face, and you can use these uh, options. It is illustrated. Uh, the artist illustrated here, and please you have to uh, read and study carefully these things by yourself. For yourself, gentlemen, uh, I'm thinking that's a big deal. It is not easy. Uh, sliding mesh technique is very. Uh, easy, it's just a mesh motion and that's uh, okay, but the dynamic mesh you have to read these uh, equations and to know how to use them carefully, okay, look, it's not easy and it is not just a simulation using a dynamic mesh. And please check out the tutorials uh, that were uploaded by ANSYS uh, company about the dynamic mesh uh, the four minutes or nine minutes tutorials okay uh, you can uh, use these tutorials to understand more and so on Okay, now we are going to uh, start our tutorial, uh, we are going to talk about a 3D and 2D vertical axis wind turbine and 2D and 3D uh, wheel. Uh, we have here the sketch of the turbine, I am going to uh, start with the 3D one. This, uh, this is the uh, turbine, three air foils. And here is the circle of the uh, domain. Notice that we have here the turbine. Uh, using the lamp mesh or the six degree of freedom solver, it means that you want to uh, carry out a more realistic simulation exactly like the uh, real simulation in the uh, real life so you have to exactly uh, carry out the design or design the turbine Vine. we'll find that this for example We'll find that the turbine, the airfoil, airfoil, airfoil are connected to the uh, this point or this is the center of rotation. They have to be connected. In the sliding mesh technique, we did not actually need to connect the airfoils. Uh, if you see or watch my uh, previous tutorials, we will find only three airfoils without these additional things. So here we now now we wanna connect the airfoils exactly like the real life, okay? Okay. So this is the turbine. Here is the center of rotation, and those are connected to each airfoil. Okay, it's according to your design. Just finished sketch, and I carried out a very small extrusion. Uh, of course, it is not realistic, but to uh, make me or to let me uh, carry out the simulation with uh, the minimum number of mesh uh, to uh, to avoid facing problems with the uh, post processing. So after finishing uh, the sketch, export it, please. Sketch format. As the file. 
Okay. Five here. V. And here, the domain. The domain, of course. We have here the sketch. Uh, it's a random uh, domain and it's random it's a random design please you have to follow of course your design and we have here the, uh, the circle that is equal in diameter to the uh, this circle like yes and also the extrusion and export it as the file Okay. Okay, go to ANSYS and create out your XY. Just import external geometry. Add frozen line bodies, yes. Click generate. Import external geometry, domain, add material. Why? Because we have two zones this zone and the other zone to run the dynamic mesh successfully. If you make both add material, you will not be able to use the dynamic mesh or even the sliding mesh and you have to make one material and one frozen okay so after that close and go to meshing And here we go. Okay. We have here the connections. Just like generate mesh. Of course, we're going to find a hexahedral. Uh, I mean, uh, coarse mesh. So, sizing. Make it 50. Gentlemen, uh, I'm using ran uh, random sizing, so do not follow me, please. You have to uh, carry out the mesh uh, or determine the suitable size according to the Y plus calculations. And I covered these calculations or methods in my previous tutorials. Please, you must take a look at them, okay? I'm now not focusing on these uh, kind of things, okay? Just click the mesh, generate. And you have to use the references that we are used or any other references that uh, are specialized in uh, the Y plus calculations to exactly carry out your uh, accurate mesh. And you have to know the Y plus ranges. Okay, after finishing, so this is our mesh. I repeat, it is a random mesh. We find here our meshing. 
notice so the mesh uh, represents the flow around the airfoil and around uh, these areas okay and it is a 3d but uh, it's just a five millimeters thick and I know it is not uh, realistic but I'm doing this to uh, decrease the uh, number of cells just for the tutorial okay here we are dealing with faces and what is the statistics elements and nodes and it is pretty important to check out the skewness, the maximum skewness it must be uh, not higher than 0.98 maximum 0.82 okay it's okay the maximum here it must not be greater than 0.98 or you will face divergence or convergence problems okay so it's okay okay let's start name selection hide all other bodies what is this this is the whole body that represents the outer domain or the stationary domain We have here the face of the inlet. And the outlet. Okay. So all bodies, I do all other bodies. This body is the inner domain. Thanks. And now the most important thing, we need to name the turbine. So, control A, control A, and then unselect this face, and this face, and this face. Okay. So now I'm pretty sure that the turbine or the turbine face is here. What is what I mean? I mean you have to select these faces, this face and this face and the airfoil face. Okay? And do this for all the other airfoils. So this is our turbine. Okay, this is our turbine. So right click, create name selection, turbine. Here is the turbine. Notice, uh, these faces also are selected. To make sure that the turbine are connected or the airfoils are connected to uh, when the uh, uh, velocity uh, when the uh, speed of the wind uh, affects the turbine it will rotate okay why we have to do this because we are not using the sliding mesh technique that uh, let uh, the which lets you to uh, give a fixed motion 
to this zone no matter what okay so show all bodies and now we have outer domain inlet outlet inner domain and the turbine thank you meshing and right click and update now let's open the setup here i'm going to use the double precision to increase the uh, accuracy it's according to the number of your processors i have here only four cores one two three four so this is the maximum I'm gonna use it three have to uh, you must have patience please so building mesh faces cells all mesh interfaces are defined here this is our domain okay okay it's gonna be a transient simulation uh, the models it's gonna be k epsilon also you must know uh, which op, uh, which is the best trojan model to be used for your, for your study do not follow me please uh, i talked about these kind of things in my previous tutorials uh, realizable and enhanceable treatment please watch uh, them and here okay for the models then the cell zoom inner domain fluid and fluid the inner domain is air okay uh, the inner domain if uh, we use sliding mesh technique you have to check on mesh motion and give here the fixed radian per second but we're not, we're not gonna use this okay the outer domain also it's air thanks and the boundary conditions the end of velocity suppose that is five meter per second just suppose or it is a random and i've talked about the hydraulic diameter and the trojan's intensity in details in the previous tutorials so please take a look at it, uh, them uh, we're gonna use uh, we're gonna use uh, random uh, here the hydraulic diameter it may be the cord length of the airfoil so i'm using a random number now static pressure gauge pressure is zero i repeat please do not use my uh, numbers you have to know how to calculate them or to get them from the research articles or the references the turbine wall of course is gonna be no slip conditions if you wanna study the to get the uh, effect of the uh, viscosity of the air no, no slip conditions walls and here the wall of the outer domain 
we have here two options if you make it no slip conditions this means that the, this wall and this wall uh, or you carry out the simulation inside a wind tunnel okay so it will be no slip conditions this means that bound around the air uh, is viscous fluid and a boundary layer uh, will uh, will be seen here and here if you use no slip conditions if you uh, carry out the simulation uh, carry out the experiment uh, in a very very wide domain you can use a specified shear and make it zero this means that uh, this domain is not surrounded by any walls or any glass or any uh, realistic wall in life okay so we leave it no slip condition okay uh, here we see that there is already mesh interfaces or interfaces and here have the contact region between the uh, two zones if you do not do this or if you do not see this uh, from my experience you will face a problem you will find that the air uh, does not enter the inner domain using sliding mesh or uh, dynamic mesh you will not be able to simulate the uh, or the uh, carry out the simulation you will find that the air uh, flows around the turbine not affecting it at all okay it's like the flow around a cylinder or a sphere so you have to uh, make two zones one material and uh, the other zone is frozen to be able to simulate these things here is the big deal the dynamic mesh I'm gonna use the dynamic mesh uh, actually this uh, simulation I think that is um, a special case for uh, from the dynamic mesh we're going not we're not gonna use the smoothing or layering or remeshing why because we uh, the simulation will not will not see any deformation in the uh, outer domain or the inner domain or anything so uh, we do not need to use these things it is for the other applications we only need to use the 6 DOF solver so the 6 DOF solver why? because we want to calculate the forces according to the velocity Please, uh, I have to say something before this. The end of the velocity here, it may be constant. So what if we have a variable velocity or you wanna, uh, or this inlet velocity follows a special formula. So you must use the UDF function. Okay, so how do we do this? Opening the UDF fluent, you can interpret or compile Where the example here, the UDF function. So, uh, new support that you want to impose a non uniform x velocity to the duct inlet, which has a parabolic shape. So, it is not just 5 meter per second. No, it, it follows a special formula. So, you have to write a code using the UDF method okay so include udf.h define profile in it x velocity thread position real x uh, this will hold the position vector real it y h and these kind of things and you will find here this is the f profile of thread position you must learn the c language to be able to write your own codes and we have here many websites C++ examples for beginners also can find C language you can find these things and you'll find here uh, very good examples you can run it by yourself C tutorial so learn C programming and this kind of things 
you find many uh, websites that provide you also can use the UDF uh, uh, fluent uh, guide also you can check out this uh, website you'll find here very uh, this is the owner of this uh, website his name is uh, Ahmed El Maki okay so we can check out many things here in the research as is fluent okay uh, or CFX and here the experimental and one more uh, Malab and Fortran also the very Good for you to uh, learn this kind of things here. Malab, Simulink, analysis, Malab working, different coordinates, algebraic, uh, algebraic operations, Matlab control, circuits, if you click on it. We'll find here. Uh, some links suppose that we wanna get this we'll find here uh, very good examples for uh, what you want and here are the models and step by step you'll find these kind of things also uh, to learn how to program uh, boundary layer now a boundary layer app uh, from Dr. Yi Sheng can uh, download this application and learn how to uh, run your code in MathWorks. It has a video, complete video. Okay, here are the band layer app Mrs. Yi Sheng and can download it and can see the functions and to learn how to code or write your code using the mail app okay uh, you can uh, check out uh, the video uh, on YouTube uh, learning fluid dynamics teaching teaching fluid mechanics and heat transfer with interactive uh, Malab, uh, you can get this video from YouTube, okay, and so on. So uh, let's go, let's come back to Fluent, and here you can interpret we have here code, just open it. Variable in velocity. So here they include uh, UDFH, and here is the same code. Okay. Please, you have to uh, carry around this uh, example on a very simple uh, simulation to know how to uh, analyze the results, and then you can use it for the turbine. Okay. You always have to make these things. All uh, you always do. Uh, make sure that this code gives you the right results okay so go back to fluent here user defined functions interpreted browse Variable in the velocity, and fret, just wait. Mm -hmm. 
okay go to n velocity and here is no constant UDF inlet x velocity okay so you can click okay now I do not need to use it so I need it read it constant now settings create six dof solver uh, we're gonna one uh, use one dof rotation I do not need to translate the uh, turbine it's not our example we only need to rotate the turbine according to or based on the forces uh, of the wind so we have here the moment of inertia you have to know how to calculate the moment of inertia moment of inertia mass multiplied by also you can check out any video uh, engineering toolbox area moment of inertia or the uh, area of uh, or the moment of inertia itself course we have to know these things how to get the moment of inertia have here I uh, integration uh, the radius square multiplied by the M it's the mass okay uh, simple pendulum uh, the mass multiplied by r square okay so suppose uh, so uh, here I recommend uh, to use the second of solver for the 3d simulations uh, the 2d simulations are pretty inaccurate for this I think because uh, we need to <laughs> increase the accuracy of the simulation and use uh, more realistic uh, approach so the 2d is not a realistic approach especially for the six dof solver so we have uh, to get a model that has uh, a mass and another uh, a mass okay so suppose that the moment of inertia here is 0.6 multiplied by uh, r square just a very simple thing so we 1.75 is the uh, radius Square and multiplied by uh, 0.6 kilograms. It's just, uh, I guess, 1.8375. One dot rotation, and here we can make it rotate. And here are the axis. You must make it one in Z, and you have to exactly know uh, the axis and the center of rotation, please. Zero zero zero, okay. Why? Because it's zero zero zero. Just click create and close. Right motion, motion, motion uh, history, and click okay. And here create edit. Here we have must to get the zones. Contact region, contact region, inlet. So the inner domain is gonna be uh, rigid. It's not deforming. We only need to rotate. If you have a UDF, of course, you can uh, write a, a simple code to use it uh, for the six dot solver. But I'm gonna use the rotate, and it has to uh, be passive. You have to read about these things. Uh, also, there is a tutorial about uh, setting a valve. You can check out this. Tutorials for setting up a dynamic mesh problem for a piston. It's available on YouTube. A piston and read valve. Okay. For the inner domain, it's gonna be passive. 
then create for the turbine is gonna be rigid also rotate but it's not passive this means that the uh, turbine only will uh, rotate according to the uh, velocity of the uh, wind just to make sure that the physics of the dynamic mesh uh, works you have to do this setup then you can create so the outer domain actually it is not deforming i only need to make the uh, turbine rotate and it is in another zone so it's gonna be stationary okay the deforming if you are pretty sure that this uh, domain will be deformed or the cells will change their shapes so it must be deforming but for here in this case it's gonna be stationary I only need to use the forces okay so the methods simple also we have to read about these things you have to know uh, what is the best gradient and the discretization for the monitors residuals to increase the accuracy of the conversions okay uh, to make a monitor uh, for files or for the surface plot surface plot for the tangential velocity and here's the very uh, the most important thing here tangential velocity and omega or the angular velocity you'll find here the basic rotational quantities uh, the angular displacement is defined by this equation and the angular velocity v equal omega r and here is the tangential velocity it depends on the radius so omega increases if the wind uh, if the uh, tangential velocity increases and of course here it's uh, according to or depends on the wind speed okay so uh, here is the tangential velocity when an object rotating about an axis every point on the object has the same angular velocity the tangential velocity of any point it is proportional to the its distance from the axis of rotation okay so this is what we want to do now is to get the tangential velocity of the turbine that's why we uh, used it in the name selection we have the file and the plot and print the console and click ok also we need to write the expression this is the uh, report diff zero this is the uh, the tangential velocity select and divided by the radius of the turbine 1.75 this is the radius of the current turbine and click define what file plot get text file and click define thanks now we can also use the moment we we'll monitor it of the turbine and the axis center okay and the forces act on the turbine port file console okay okay and then we have to initialize uh, 
please check out the hybrid initialization and standard initialization. Check in case topology. Okay, we have here a warning convergence tolerance, so we got a problem. Okay, gentlemen, we got a problem on the uh, convergence, so uh, I have re uh, meshed the simulation or the uh, model, uh, and let's see. Here the mesh. Uh, we used the face sizing uh, 10 millimeters. And now uh, it is the body sizing, the whole body. Please, uh, this is the method that I used. And then close. You may not change the mesh, but I have changed it. And just reset uh, this setup. I'm not sure if the error is due to the mesh size or the method of the mesh or the UDF that uh, was interpreted and uh, was not used. Okay, so if you, if you use uh, face this kind of problems, please you have to reset the setup again. And I have faced many uh, errors before, and the reason was not uh, clear. Just uh, uh, reset the setup and try to change anything to make uh, make it easier, okay? Transient models, Pescas, okay, Epsilon, Ansid, okay. Okay. Just to make sure uh, that the initialization is good, just try to uh, check out the uh, mesh motion. If it works, okay. Go to the initialization. Okay, here we go. So. This model works, but we do not need to use the sliding mesh. So go to the inner, cancel it. I need to use the sixth off dynamic mesh. Sixth off with Rotate one eight three seven five just create close right. Inner domain, rotate, rigid, rebind, outer, thanks, and German, this tells you that you must be patient and you have to test everything. Uh, simulations are not easy. You can carry out an experiment uh, if you have the money and the facilities, but carrying out these simulations using computers, computers are not smart, 
like humans have to know this and you have to try 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 and try the turbine uh, velocity and the tangential velocity okay expression and here select divided by 1.75 for plot and to cancel define and then force moment turbine for and okay force turbine port okay notice gentlemen that <laughs> this time we did not face any problems so uh, go here for the solution animations for it auto save you can make it every 50 to uh, get more uh, solution files for the uh, animation I need to simulate the, uh, the velocity contours failed contact missions inlet outlet turbine display okay this is the contour I need it in front Front, make it in memory. Okay. Also, the time step I have covered these things uh, in the previous stories. You must take a look at it. Uh, it is not a random time step, of course. I'm just showing you how to uh, run the simulation, then calculate. And here the residuals and the conversions. Of course, it depends on the uh, boundary conditions. Note that this is the conversions. It's okay. And here, turn it into the power negative four. Negative seven is very good. If it is negative to uh, three, it is not the conversion that we need. And here with the monitors,
expression, moment, force, here are the contours. And expression for the moment, the force. Increasing the, uh, the iterations, time step increases conversions makes makes it good okay so we find here the uh, moment and the force okay and here is the simulation uh, I'm gonna stop it uh, now and I'm gonna show you picture. After carrying out many okay, so here are the area with an average of lost in magnitude. Of course, gentlemen, uh, you have to set the reference values. I did not show uh, show this. Sorry, uh, you can uh, check it out from the previous tutorials. The reference values you must uh, calculate the area reference area. And the uh, reference, the other reference, reference values. I showed that in the three D simulation uh, that was uh, re published. Please, you have to set it. And here is the time history. Uh, after uh, almost seven seconds, you will see that the turbine starts from zero uh, uh, angular uh, tangential velocity. Okay, and then it increases, increases, increases. Uh, due to the uh, inlet speed of the wind and increases, increases. Okay, and of course, you can get the moment and the angular, uh, angular, uh, uh, the angular speed, okay, uh, like the expression. Okay, so also we have an animation for that. We have here the mesh, uh, the animation, look. Sorry, it's very fast, speed, slower. Look, so this is the turbine. Uh, due to the forces so congratulations this is the first application now we're going to talk about the 2d vertical axis wind turbine but uh, before uh, starting it I prefer to show you the uh, this uh, the previous simulation that I have already uh, done and carried out here is the models of course I used the same okay epsilon the same settings and the zone inner okay and the interfaces the boundary conditions the dynamic mesh I only six off stationary rigid rigid and the initialization okay and the activities and here another time step and the reference values I uh, calculated it, run calculation, okay, okay, of course uh, because the uh, time step is 0.5 does not give the uh, good convergence uh, 
I'm just showing you what's going on. Of course, the time step affects the simulation. If it is 0.5, you will get uh, a very fast response for the wind uh, on the turbine. If it is 0.001, you will get uh, the results after a very long time. Uh, you will find that the velocity or omega, the tangential velocity or angular velocity, uh, does not change immediately. Uh, here. We find here uh, after 7.5 seconds it reach, reaches 1.14 but if the time step is 0.0001 it will uh, start from zero and it will uh, vary it will uh, get a little uh, consume a very long time until it reaches this speed of course Also, if you have uh, a very big turbine and the moment of inertia is greater than 1.8 kilo, uh, kilo kilograms that we have used, I think, uh, it will take a very long time until the wind rotates the turbine. Also, you must know uh, the real uh, kilogram the real weight of the turbine of your uh, test so you have to carry out an experimental uh, test to know what's going on because it is not easy at all to use, uh, to use the six dot solver for this and here the animation okay so thank you gentlemen for your patience now we're gonna talk about the 2d the 2D, I do not recommend using the 2D, like I said, but I'm, I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, carry it out. Carry it out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now we're going to talk about the 2D. So, simply, I'm going to delete the extrusion without consumed okay and here export cat format we need here to uh, make it as para solid text files not step okay to the turbine and I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you why also domain like okay export get format to the Domain, okay. Uh, we have to convert them to surfaces before importing them uh, into ANSYS. Uh, why? To uh, make sure that one is material and the other is frozen, or you will face, I think, some problems. Open. Where are the 2D? Here we go. Step file will not work with the 2D. It's all works. Just be careful. When you deal with these models, so now here we go. Just insert surface planner and okay. 
here is our surface all save all also as a parasolid I'm gonna replace place it thanks close it now open to the domain insert surface planner okay save as xt replace thanks mr saltworks and here xy import first uh, thing you have to uh, get the 2d domain as add material xy surface lines okay click generate okay please do not import the other domain until something that we have to do xy create a sketch or okay you can create surface from edge from edges this is an edge this is a surface let's add material let's add material create boolean subtract yes yes thank you very much now import the 2d as that frozen yes generate now gentlemen it's exactly like the 3d simulation a domain and another domain so we had to boolean uh, carry out this that boolean so uh, now we have to take more actions okay surface surfaces from edges i'm gonna use this 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 and this apply well, we have a we have here a problem concept surfaces from edges yeah I know I know we have <laughs> please be careful when you deal with this kind of things we lift this so we have here five not four so we have here the first surface boolean from this I need to study the uh, flow around their foils that's why I do not need it to be uh, I need it to be like this this is the air and this is the airfoil the same with the other airfoil concept lines from a uh, no no lines concept surface from edges five boolean and here click generate also serves from edges
And here, yes, generate, Boolean, yes, generate, thanks, and to connect the turbine, notice if you lift this <laughs> as it is, this means that the air will uh, enter this area and no connection between the airfoils okay hey remember it is not a sliding mesh technique so surfaces and edges lean Danka, feeling, feeling dunk. Now it's exactly like the 3D. The turbine are connected. The turbine, uh, the turbine parts are connected. So, thank you. Go to meshing. Start our mesh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have here the domains. Have here generate the mesh. Okay. Right click, insert sizing. Make it 50. I'm telling you again that this is a random size. Okay. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Here is the mesh. Okay. Have the air, uh, the airfoil. Uh, if you find that uh, the airfoil, uh, <coughs> the mesh, uh, does not surround the whole airfoil, uh, so suppose that you find some cells here and covers this. Uh, area so you have to increase the sizing around the airfoil of course you have to carry out uh, refinement and if this is uh, is not hexa mesh you can have to uh, carry out an inflation and please watch my videos uh, to study these things okay so now The same way, inner domain, outer domain, and let out it. Here we are dealing with edges, not faces. Uh, gentlemen, uh, as you uh, saw in the 3D mesh, the inner faces automatically uh, they were automatically created so we have here to define the inner faces to tell ANSYS of Flewin that this the air will uh, come from here and it will uh, enter this domain the inner domain it will not flow around it okay so you have to define the interface enter Phase one. This does not mean that we're gonna use the sliding mesh technique. No, 
it means that there are there are two zones and if you use the slanting mesh technique and you monitor the tangential velocity you will find it uh, fixed no matter what okay but uh, using six dof solver <laughs> it was not uh, fixed it's not constant okay here interface two and also we need to select the turbine control a and deselect this only and right click this is the turbine so you must select all these things Okay. Thanks. Show all bodies. Now we have outlet domain, inlet, outlet, interface one, interface two, and our turbine. Statistics. Okay. Quality. Let's do this. Okay, very good. Now I'm pretty sure that Okay, after this Okay. Okay, now the turbine and the last thing is to create name selection of the inner domain. Okay. Thank you meshing. Show all bodies and close. I just updated the mesh. Okay, now for the setup. And so have to reset this. Uh, I did something. Okay, double precision. That's okay to do the serial. We're going to use the same settings. Transient models, Vescas. Okay, Epsilon. I have used uh, SST transition to capture the uh, separation of the airfoil was pretty amazing. Cell zones, boundary conditions, and later we're gonna use random values. Okay, and here, as you see, you must create the interfaces manually. Close dynamic mesh, dynamic mesh, only six DOF. Create one off here it's 1.8375 as you see <laughs> the 2d does not have uh, a weight so it is not recommended to use the 2d analysis it is not realistic okay also for the reference areas it is a big deal actually We have here inner domain, rigid, passive, create, outer domain, 
stationary it's not a deforming uh, def domain and we have the turbine rigid okay not passive I'm sorry uh, you have here to get this okay thanks reference values please watch my tutorial about the 2d uh, or 3d uh, settings uh, about the turbine for the later to know how to get these values methods okay we have to uh, check this out in the theory guide or the user guide to know the equations and what's suitable for this mesh uh, also for the monitors and these kind of things I have already show uh, you how to uh, do these things so no no need now hybrid uh, hybrid initialization notice okay calculate Here are the conversions. So, gentlemen, this is okay for this simulation. Run. Also, you will uh, you can get the uh, animation and these kind of things as I have shown you. Okay. So I'm gonna stop it. And now uh, I can show you uh, another example, 3D, uh, 3D wheel, uh, but it rotates uh, according to uh, an injector. You can use it as an injector. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna uh, start it from scratch. It is the same procedure. Uh, we're gonna use the 2D. Okay start with the 2d please you have to follow the same procedure that i have done in solidworks you have to get uh, the uh, surfaces and then import them okay i'm gonna show you German, this is the Pelton. Oh, it's not the Pelton wheel, or it's just a wheel. Also, we have here the uh, the diameter, 180. What is this? Yes, 100, 100 millimeter. It's uh, pretty small. Notice that we have here. Uh, this turbine so this is the circle and this is the uh, blades okay uh, I think that I used trim to make these uh, things for a reason after this you have to export it as 2D Pelton wheel as XT file, okay, and then open it in SolidWorks. Yes, and just carry out or generate the surface planner. Just select this edge and then export it again as XT. Then import and do the same thing for the uh, domain. For the domain, uh, 
this is the domain okay and here have we have here the injector okay this is the uh, gonna be the inlet here the same radius okay just uh, export it also yes and then open it yes and insert surface planner use uh, only this rectangle rectangle and okay and then you can carry out the boolean later so here uh, after importing uh, this as 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 add material uh, we carried out the boolean uh, exactly the way, same way that we have just shown in the 2D uh, vertical axis wind turbine to make this hollow and yes this is the surface and uh, we got the boolean and then we imported this and we carry out the surfaces and uh, the boolean for all the blades okay we have one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight to make this view you must see this view okay so this is now the turbine uh, is connected like the airfoil the airfoils uh, also we carried out a surface for this and then we used the boolean carried out the surface and we just used the boolean okay and so on The same way, gentlemen, that were used, I used here, it here to carry out the necessary settings. Now close it. And you go to Mesh. And here is the uh, mesh we used here, uh, unstructured uh, mesh. And you can use what you want, uh, what we have here to make an inflation so, uh, for the boundary layer and uh, this kind of physics. And here, so this is the inflation or triangle uh, methods. We have here the turbine. The inflation, uh, we selected this face only. You have to uh, hide all other bodies, okay? Then you will find this only. And then uh, you uh, select this face and use the name selections. We have here the inlet, okay? Outer domain, inner domain, and the turbine. As you know, you have to select all these things exactly like what I did. You, get, uh, you click Control A and then uh, deselect this uh, interface, and you will find uh, all these uh, edges are selected. So those are the turbine and the interface one and interface two exactly. So after this, you go to uh, the inflation, you have to uh, make sure that you select this face only and do not use geometry selection, use uh, name selection and use the turbine. Okay, after finishing these uh, steps, use the turbine and here are the maximum layers and you can make the uh, inflation without any problem. One, two, three, four, five, 
well, I say that it's a random mesh. After this, close and go to the setup and also the same way Transient models, uh, viscous reliable, uh, cell zones, okay, boundary conditions. Here the end velocity uh, from this injector is gonna be 10 meter per second, troublant intensity and the hydraulic diameter, and also the outlet uh, pressure is gonna be zero, or according to your uh, test. Uh, turbine wall, okay, uh, mesh interfaces, you have to uh make them uh, like i have just shown uh, the dynamic uh, mesh settings six it off rotate okay uh, it is a random uh, value and here the rigid body the inner domain rotate on passive outer domain stationary Turbine rotate on. Okay, thank you. Uh, because I have uh, run this simulation before, you will find here some data. No, do, do not. Uh, you will find all these things zero. If you, uh, uh, if this is the first time to use this, uh, this setting. Okay. Also here the area and the uh, length and the methods. Uh, it's gonna greenhouse still based, and or oh, for the greenhouse not based, I think it's more appropriate for the unstructured mesh. That's why you have to check it out. Okay, we'll find here more information. The node based averaging scheme is known to be more accurate than the default cell based scheme for unstructured meshes, most notably for triangular and tetrahedral meshes. Okay, so uh, you have to make sure about these kind of things and the monitors. And we talked about all these kind of things, and we have here we can initialize the solution. Okay, no problem. Here and calculation activities, and you can run the simulation without any problem. So, I'm gonna show you uh, the animation. Here, gentlemen, is the animation. Look, notice the jet pushes the uh, wheel and just slides no deformation happens and then it can increase the velocity okay actually I have used uh, many settings but it worked with this uh, final setting and of course, uh, I'm telling you that the dynamic mesh, uh, according to your uh, model, according to your settings, you have to know exactly if you want to use the smoothing, layering, remeshing, or only six doffs over. So the same way with the uh, 3D, I'm going to show you show it. Uh, okay, gentlemen, we have here the 3D uh, built on wheel, of course, here at Frozen. And here the add material, uh, add material or add frozen, uh, doesn't matter. We have here uh, that sketch. 
to know uh, to make it like this uh, you can extrude it from here or uh, in Venner or SolidWorks doesn't matter uh, the most important thing is to be like this to be uh, the this turbine okay and we have here the injector but this is 3D pretty easy pretty simple then go to meshing So this is the mesh. So we have here the mesh. Also, it is unstructured, you can make it structured or according to uh, the skewness uh, patch tetrahedrons patch conforming user use global settings here are the global settings okay the most important thing is quality the maximum skewness okay and here are the statistics okay and of course the inflation the same way uh, the inflation, uh, the rigid turbine. Of course, uh, here you can uh, use this uh, body only. Okay, this body only is enough. And name the selection and click on rigid turbine. Use the name selection and let. But we here here we have to select the face, deforming. Domain node is not deforming, uh, it is a stationary uh, domain, it is, uh, I typed it uh, wrongly, and here is the outlet, this is the face, and here is the, also the rigid domain, and rigid domain, this is the rigid domain, it's a body, and the rigid turbine is faces, are faces, okay? So the inlet is face, the re stationary uh, domain is a body, the outlet is a face, the rigid domain is a body, and the rigid turbine faces, as you see. Okay, so after that, close. Go to setup. And this is the same procedure. Just hold on. Okay, we did not uh, define the interfaces because <laughs> they are automatically uh, defined here. Models, <coughs> K epsilon, cell zones, boundary conditions, inlet velocity. Okay. and rigid turbine and wall rigid uh, domain uh, wall uh, here is not a deforming domain like i said it is just a stationary domain i'm sorry i uh, typed it wrong uh, the wall uh, of the stationary domain you can make it not sl no slip or specify chairs according to the uh, the experiment and the wall rigid domain if you find it here uh, the wall uh, of the rigid domain, of the inner domain, you have to make it as specified shear and uh, it uh, can be zero, okay? Like this, you can make it like this. And you have to carry out actually uh, many simulations until you get the validation of the experiment, okay? And here are the methods, 
and the monitors and the initialization just initialize solution okay no problem and the uh, calculation activities and then you can run the calculation without any problem And here the animation exactly like what I have shown you in the tangential velocity. Notice it is negative because the rotation is clockwise and it will increase with time. If it is a sliding mesh technique, it, it will be a straight line and it does not change no matter what. Notice here. Once the uh, air or the water hits the blades, it rotates from zero and it increases. Uh, the negative here is just a, a sign of the uh, the way or the uh, direction of rotation. Uh, it rotates clockwise. If it is uh, anti-clockwise, it will be positive and it will increase from here to here okay this does not mean that it increases no it decreases okay it does not mean that it uh, decreases no it increases the velocity increases with time and it also depends on the uh, time step i used a random time step to make it uh, faster okay can stop the uh, simulation. I'm gonna show you the final solution of the animation. Or the animation. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I have uh, closed the project without saving it uh, to get the uh, animation that I have already saved okay let's uh, see the animation notice that it starts uh, low velocity and then it increases 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 this is as we just watch it in the in the monitor again uh, uh, the forces, the forces of the jet, and also can use uh, the UDF to do uh, for the variable velocity. Again, notice that this domain is stationary, and this is uh, rotating, but it is rigid. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, this is my tutorial about uh, the 6 degree of freedom dynamic mesh. Uh, we covered uh, actually uh, four simulations, uh, 2D vertical axis wind turbine and a 3D one, and uh, 2D Pelton wheel or something that uh, like uh, the Pelton wheel and the 3D one. Thank you very much. Please, you have to uh, learn from the user guide and the theory guide, and you have to learn uh, the UDF examples and the uh, Fortran language or C language or C++ or MATLAB uh, these are pretty amazing and you can do many many things uh, as you have just seen thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh